Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to learn how to find the total force on a vertical wall submerged in water or in any sort of fluid. Typically, the fluid will be water. Here is a wall. You can see that this is the bottom of the wall and the fluid level goes all the way to the very top. So let's say that this total distance right here, let's call that capital H. That's the total height of the water level from the bottom to the top against the wall. This could be a wall of a swimming pool, for example. We also realize that the pressure as you go further down into the, into the water, the pressure is a function of height. It is equal to rho g y. y is the distance down below the surface, from below the surface, so we'll call that y. Since it is a variable pressure, because it increases as you go further down into the fluid, to try and find the total force is a little tricky. We know that the pressure can be defined as the force divided by the area. So therefore, we can say that the force is equal to the pressure times the area, but it's not a uniform pressure, it changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small little strip at a depth equal to y. Here's a small little strip on the wall. We can call the area of that strip a small little dA, and the dA would be equal to the width of the wall. Let's call this the width of the wall. That's a, that's a w times the height of the little strip, let's call that a small little dy, a small little change in y. Like that. Now we can find the pressure on that small little strip. We can say from that equation, or I shouldn't say the pressure, but I should say the force, we can call it a small d df. The force on this small little strip on the wall, let's call that a df, and that is equal to the pressure at this particular depth times the area, which is a dA. Now, the strip is so thin that the pressure really doesn't change from the top of the strip to the bottom of the strip. We can make it inf almost infinitely thin where the thickness is virtually zero, so the pressure really doesn't change across that small little strip. That way, this is a valid statement. Now, the pressure at this location can be found to be rho g y, so therefore df can be written as the pressure, which is the density times acceleration due to gravity times the depth of that little strip times dA. And dA can be written as the width times dy. So dF is equal to the rho times g times y instead of dA. We can write the width times dy. If we now want to find the total force on the entire wall, we can simply add up all the little strips. We can make an infinite number of little strips, add them all up, and of course that is equal to the integral of that. So the force is equal to the integral of all the little dfs, which is equal to the integral of all the rho g y w times dy, and we're going to integrate it from y equals zero to y equals the full depth of the pool or the full depth of that whatever that is that we're holding back with that wall. Whatever is constant come out of the integral sign, rho, g, and w are constant, so this can now be written as the density times g times the width of the pole times the integral of y dy from y equals zero to h. That's an easy integral. When we integrate that, we get rho g w times y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to h. And finally, when we plug in the upper limit, because if we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. This is equal to rho g w h squared divided by 2. Now, if we write that a little bit differently, I'm going to write things a little bit different. I can say that the force on the whole wall is equal to 1 half rho g h times h times w. Hmm, why did I write it like that? Well, rho, notice that rho gh is equal to the equation for pressure. Half rho gh is equal to half that pressure. But if you look at this quantity here, what does rho g capital H stand for? That's the pressure at the very bottom of the pole. In other words, half of that would be the pressure at the halfway point, which is the half or the average pressure of what you experience when you go from the top to the bottom. Since it increases linearly, the pressure is linearly proportional to y, we can then say that the average pressure is representative for the pressure of the whole pool if the wall is vertical. 
So this becomes the average pressure. So the force on a vertical wall can be, can be calculated by taking the average pressure, the pressure at the halfway point, times h times w. Now h is the depth of the pool, w is the width of the wall, so therefore h times w is equal to the area, and this becomes the force on a vertical wall. We can simply say that it's equal to the average pressure at the halfway point times the area of the wall. If you don't remember that, you can still go ahead through the integral phase. You can simply take a small strip, find the area of that small strip, find the force on the small strip, integrate all over all the strips, and you get the exact same answer. Again, this is equal to the average pressure at the halfway point times the area of the wall. If you remember this, that'll save you a lot of time from having to do that each time when you're trying to find the force on a vertical wall submerged in water. And that's how it's done.